All right, good morning, class, and uh, welcome to Mr. Shua's Guide to Passing the Algebra 2 SOL. And the Algebra 2 SOL is getting ready to come up in the state of Virginia. This is uh, the test item set, which was just recently released by the Virginia Department of Education. And the SOL causes many students some uh, difficulty and fear, and it shouldn't. What I'm about to do here is I'm going to go through every question on this test item set, show you how to answer these questions, and hopefully this is going to help you to pass and maybe pass advanced the uh, Algebra 2 SOL. Now, what I'm going to show you, the way that I sh actually answer these questions, your teachers may have shown you different methods for answering the questions. I'm going to use what I feel are some of the most expedient methods to solving the questions. There's usually more than one way to answer a math question. So if you're not familiar with my method and if you're more comfortable with the way your teacher has shown you, please go ahead and do so. All right, enough with the introduction. So now on to Mr. Shua's guide to passing the Algebra 2 uh, SOL for 2015. Okay, we'll start with the sample questions. Okay, sample A. It says, which expression is equivalent to the square root of 7x over 16? Well, if you're familiar with these laws of radicals, you know that you can take the square root of 7x over 16, break it into two separate radicals, which is basically the square root of 7x over the square root of 16. The square root of 7x does not simplify any further, but the square root of 16 does, which is 4, leaving you with your final simplification of 7, the square root of 7x over 4, which is answer choice C. Okay, let's move on to the next sample. Directions, type your answer in the box. Sample B, what value of x makes the square root of x minus 3 equals 6 true? Okay, so we'll start out with the square root of x minus 3 equals 6. Simple way to answer this is just to add 3 to each side, you'll get the square root of x equals 9. To get rid of that radical, that square root of x, we want to raise both sides of the equation to the power of 2. So we're basically squaring the square root of x and we're squaring the 9, x equals 81 which would make sense because the square root of 81 is 9 and 9 minus 3 is 6. So 81 is our answer for the sample. Okay, so enough of those easy questions. Now we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of this test item set. All right, let's go on to question one. Which expression is equivalent to the square root of 20 x to the 16th y to the 25th for positive x and y values. Now the way that I teach my students how to answer these radical questions is take the original radical equation, whatever it is, split it into two separate radicals. Under your first radical, you're going to take out everything that's a perfect square. Everything that's not a perfect square, you're going to leave under your separate radical. So if I start with the radical 20 or the square root of 20, I can break that part down as radical 4 times radical 5 because 4 times 5 equals 20 and 4 is a perfect square. That's why I'm placing it under my first radical. X to the 16th is a perfect square. Any even exponent is a perfect square. So I'm placing that under my first radical. Y to the 25th is not a perfect square, but Y to the 24th is. The remaining Y I'm going to place under my second radical. Now, everything here can be simplified, which I do here. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of X to the 16th is just X to the 16 over 2, which is just X to the 8th. And Y to the 24th is just Y to the 24 over 2, or just Y to the 12th. And then the square root of 5Y, which can't simplify any further. Now, if we look at our answer choices, choice C matches what we got here from our work. Okay? Now, that's question number one. Let's go on to question number two. Which expression is equivalent to the cubed root of 6W to the 7 times the cubed root of 4W to the 5th? Now, since they're both cubed roots, since their indexes match, I can multiply these radicands here and then simplify later. So the cube root of 6w to the 7th times the cube root of 4w to the 5th 
Well, 6 times 4 is 24. W to the 7 times W to the 5th is W to the 12th because we add the exponents. So right now I'm at the cube root of 24 w squared and i'll just simplify this again breaking it into two radicals everything that's going to be a perfect cube i'm going to place under my first radical everything not a perfect cube i'm going to place under my second radical now cube root of 24 i would break down as the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 3 because 8 times 3 does equal 24 and 8 is a perfect cube w to the 12th is also a perfect cube so i'm going to place that here the only thing that's going to be under my second radical is the cube root of three now this simplifies easily the cube root of eight is two and the cube root of w to the 12th is just simply w to the 12 over three or w to the fourth bring over the cube root of three and that is answer choice a which we have here okay that's question number two Let's go on to question number three. The steps used to solve an equation are shown. Okay, we see our steps. What property justifies the work between step four and step five? Step four has one times r equals 21i. Step five, r equals 21i. That's going to be the identity property of multiplication. Okay, the identity property of multiplication, also known as the multiplicative identity, states that the product of any number you multiply by one is the exact same number. It maintains its identity. And here's examples. Five times one, still five. Sixty-seven times one, still sixty-seven. Two thousand nine hundred eighty-three, still times one, still two thousand nine hundred eighty-three. Any number you multiply by one maintains its identity so that's the identity property of multiplication that one was pretty easy okay let's go on to question four which expression is equivalent to the following expression if no denominators equals zero okay so what we have here is a complex fraction which is basically a fraction being divided by another fraction easy way that you can answer these Okay, so the original fraction, 11 minus W over 30W squared, divided by W minus 11 over 5W6. So this fraction is dividing this fraction. We can simply rewrite that as the top fraction divided by the bottom fraction. And then what do we do when we're dividing fractions? We change the division to multiplication, and then we flip the second fraction. We multiply by the reciprocal. So it's going to be 11 minus W over 30W squared times 5W6 over W minus 11. Okay, now our next step. We want to get it into a position where we can start to cancel out items. So what if I were to multiply the first fraction by negative 1 over negative 1, which is just 1, but... When I multiply by negative 1, what happens to the numerator here? Doesn't this become a negative 11 and this becomes a positive W or just simply a W minus 11? And that's going to match here. Here, the negative 1, that's going to just become a negative 30 W squared. So right now we have W minus 11 over negative 30 W squared times 5 W6 over W minus 11. We can cancel here. So we can cancel the W minus 11 here and here. We can cancel the 5 and the negative 30 because 5 goes into 5 once. 5 goes into negative 30, negative 6 times. And then we can cancel the W squared here and the W6 because that's just W to the 6 divided by W squared, which is just W to the 6 minus 2 or simply W to the 4. So in our numerator, we have W to the 4th. In our denominator, we have negative 6, after all the canceling. Now, since there's a negative in our denominator, it doesn't matter whether it's in the numerator or the denominator because the whole fraction is negative. So if I place it here, place it here, or here, it has the same value. And we look at answer choice A, where the negative is in the numerator, it matches our answer choice here. Okay? Let's move on to number 5. What is the complete factorization of 18x to the fourth plus 12x cubed minus 6x? Now, easy way you can do this, looking at your answer choices, you can simply multiply each of these out, see if it matches this. 
Okay, so let's go. So if we if I were to do six x cubed times three x plus two using the distributive formula, that's going to give me eighteen x to the fourth plus twelve x cubed. That doesn't match that. Okay, let's look at b. Six x times three x cubed plus two x squared is going to give me well the exact same answer as a eighteen x to the fourth plus twelve x cubed. So that doesn't match. So a and b are out. Let's look at uh, C here. 6x times 3x minus 1 times x plus 1. Well, if I multiply these two, which are in the parentheses, if I take care of that first and FOIL, it's going to be 6x times 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. Then I'll take the 6x and then just distribute it to the parentheses. I'm going to get 18x cubed plus 12x squared minus 6x comes pretty close, but it's not exactly the same thing. That's not it. So let's look at our answer choice D. 6x times 3x cubed plus 2x squared minus 1. Distributing the 6x, I'm going to get 18x to the fourth plus 12x cubed minus 6x, which actually matches our factoring here. So D is our answer choice. Okay? Again, so this should be rather simple. All right, let's go on to question six. Which of these is equivalent to I to the 75th? Now, you should be familiar with powers of I, and you know that I itself is equal to the square root of negative one. I squared is equal to negative one. I cubed is equal to negative I, and I to the fourth equals one. There's two ways that you can go about finding out what I to the 75th is. The first way, I to the 75th, because if you notice here, this is 1, 2, 3, 4. This pattern repeats. This is I to the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th. Repeats for I to the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. The pattern just keeps repeating. So if we want to find out for I to the 75th, I can just simply take 75 divided by 4 which is going to give me 18 with a remainder of 3. Since the 3 is there, that's going to leave me at i cubed. And i cubed is negative i. Now, if you're not familiar with this way of finding out i, you can use your calculator to find powers of i using the i part feature. And what you would do is you would hit the math key, hit the right arrow. Matter of fact, let me just go ahead and do it for you here. So I'm going to bring up my calculator, and what you do is you hit the math key, right arrow over to num, and option three is I part. Okay, then what you'll do is you'll want to bring up I. The way you bring up I on the calculator, you hit the second button and the period. That brings up your I. We want to hit the caret to make an exponent, and since we're looking for i to the 75th, we'll place 75 here, negative i. So we got negative i this way doing it, uh, figuring it out, and we got negative i on our calculator. So either way, you should be able to find the power of i. Okay? Makes sense? Let's go on to question seven. For which value of b is x squared plus bx minus 60 factorable over the set of integers. What that basically means is what number I place in for b is going to be factorable. Easy way to do this is place each one of the numbers in and see if they factor. So 61, if I place in x squared plus 61x minus 60, see if it factors, it actually is not factorable because there are no two numbers that I can add to get positive 61 and multiply to get negative 60. So A is out. Let's look at B, 23. If I put 23 in here, x squared plus 23x minus 60. That's also not factorable because there are no two numbers which I can add, which add to positive 23 and multiply to negative 60. I'm going to come back to C. Let's put in D here, negative 16. X squared minus 16X minus 60. 
is also not factorable because there are no two numbers that I can add to get negative 16 and at the same time multiply to negative 60. But now let's look at C, answer C, choice negative 7, x squared minus 7x minus 60. Well, the factors of 60 are listed here. Now, there are two numbers that I can choose which would get me a negative 7 and at the same time multiply to negative 60. And that would be x minus 12 times x plus 5. So with the negative 7, this is factorable, so choice C is our answer.